Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Pond, awards editor of The Wrap. We're very happy to have you here for our award screening of The Good Boss with writer, director, and co-producer Fernando Leon de Aranoa and actor Javier Bardem. The Good Boss is Spain's Oscar entry for the Best International Feature Film category. Uh, we're going to start by showing you the trailer, and then we'll go right into a conversation with our panelists. To the audience, please participate in the live chat. Share your thoughts. Let us know where you're tuning in from. And before we introduce our guests, let's take a look at the trailer. Tenemos mucho que celebrar. Que gracias a vosotros, hoy somos finalistas del premio que da el gobierno regional a la excelencia empresarial. A mí no me dicen delante de los Es un momento muy delicado. No podemos tener ese individuo ahí cuando llegue la comisión. ¿A qué nos deja sin premio? ¿Qué dicen las pancartas? Lo que dicen siempre las pancartas. Nada bueno. Tenemos problemas peores. Mira, es otra vez. Te veo con la cabeza al otro lado. ¿Qué te pasa? ¿Dónde estás? Mi mujer. Dice que necesita aire. ¿Te compro otro tiro de oxígeno o qué cojones hago yo? ¿Y esas? Las nuevas. ¿Te acerco? No es buena idea. La justicia se tapa los ojos para no influir en lo que juzga. A mí me encanta que me tapen los ojos también. Sí. Tengo los oídos mal, en el megáfono. Y tuve otitis de pequeño y los tengo muy sensibles. ¿Y qué quieres que haga yo? ¿Te llevo al otro reino? ¿Tú crees que puedo montar este escándalo en medio de todo el mundo? Mira, Jess, está fatal. Los problemas que yo tenga con mi marido no son cosa tuya. Perdóname, es que en el momento que perjudican a mi empresa son mis problemas. A veces hay que trucar la balanza. Para que la medida sea exacta. Welcome back. It's my pleasure to introduce writer-director Fernando Leon de Aranoa and the star of the film, Javier Bardem. Welcome. Hello, Steve. Hello. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Um, and, and thank you for a, for a terrific film. Um, before we, we get into it, I want to talk a little bit about the relationship between the two of you. I mean, your first movie was made almost 20 years ago, right? Monday mm -hmm. in the Sun. Um, mm -hmm. At that point, did you hit it off so well that you figured you'd be working together, you know, 19 years later? <laughs> well, I guess, yes, it turned yeah. out to be a great experience, apart from being a great movie. Uh, and, uh, and I get, we get a, I mean, a, a strong and deep connection, personal and artistic connection. And, and since then we've been friends, close friends. Uh, and we've done, this is our third movie. Moments in the Sun, Loving Paolo, and The Good Boss. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I felt the same. I think it was a great experience. It was fun. It was uh, inspiring. And I think we both are very proud of the result of that film so many years ago. So we worked again, uh, again together like uh, four, five years ago uh, doing uh, Loving Pablo. And then uh, we, we were eager to, to repeat in a film which somehow is a kind of a reversal for Mondays in the Sun. No? Both of them deal with with the with a workplace with the i mean with the labor uh, with the labor and with the people uh, that one man in the sun was more about unemployed people javier was playing one of them santa and for this film we made the decision of of uh, trying to show the a different point of view you know and so he's playing this the the owner of, uh, of factory you know? no he's the boss <laughs> right yeah and, and not necessarily a good boss no. <laughs> well, no, not necessarily good boss. Uh, yes, but uh, but that's what the people in the factory, the people around him, and most especially the audience have to believe that he's kind of a, a man with great intentions, but then something goes wrong. No. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Fernando, what what led you to to this particular story? Why did you Why did you start writing this? I think it was uh, several different things, no. But most of it was actually the, the main character, no. I, I uh, the first thing that came to my mind was this character was uh, Don Julio Blanco, the good boss, this owner of a scales factory. By the way, it's not casual. They they, they do scales, and uh, 
And I, I think uh, I like the character. I like him being like a very strong and, and charismatic uh, person, but also especially the way he deals with his workers. No, this idea of he trying to to go so far into the personal life of his workers and trying to fix even their personal or even their sentimental problems. No, in um, in order because that way he thinks that they will be more efficient and probably more productive. No. And, I felt that this was giving me the choice to tell about uh, the the labor landscape and about uh, how the personal and, and professional relationships uh, uh, work and, and you know interact with each other. And also, I felt that uh, that it could be very fun, I mean, you know, because uh, this way that in, in which he performs, uh, I quickly felt that I could find a bunch of uh, sequences where he was going to really. Uh, to be very fun because of the way he he was acting, but at the same time very dark and, and telling about something which is important also, no? which is this this relationships in in a workplace. Right. Um, I mean, Javier, I know when when I ran into you a couple of days ago at, at a being the Ricardos screening, mm -hmm. you were talking about how much fun you had playing this guy. I mean, what mm -hmm. what was it about it that that made him fun to play? Well, it really is a character for the ages, uh, in the sense of an actor of a, of a as a as a as a gift, as a choice, as a chance to play, because he has every color you can imagine. In the sense that uh, there's humor, there's darkness, there is tension, there is thriller, there is love relationships, and and the thing is, the dialogues and the situations that Fernando creates are so rich. Uh, the other day I was saying uh, that what a luck as an actor to have had working with two of the most amazing screenwriters in the world for me, which is Adam Sorkin and Fernando Leon. It's, it's when you have those dialogues, those situations, those scenes, your work gets richer and richer because re you really are working with, with a lot, lots of uh, clues and details and choices to take as an actor. So... The joy of the fun, which is there's a lot of fun in the movie, and there's a lot, a lot of laughter, comes from the situation. You're not doing a genre. I'm not doing a comedy. It's just that the way he reacts, the way he behaves, the way he maintains or tries to maintain the order, sometimes is so fun to watch. But but there's also some some darkness into it that makes the movie go beyond a comedy. It is. Uh, a portrait of, as Fernando said, of the labor labor landscape and the abuse in the in the working place. The abuse that we all know it can happen anywhere to anyone. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it does feel like this is a movie that's coming out at a, at a time when there's more emphasis on abusive bosses, people are being called out, um, you know, people have left the workforce during COVID because they don't want to put up with stuff. I mean, you know, it, it, it feels like, Fernando, this is, this is a good time to be examining the workplace the way you are here. Yeah, right. No, because I, I, by the end, I think that uh, the, the biggest part of our lives takes place in, in the workplace. No? <laughs> Sometimes we spend even more time with the people we work with than with our family. No? And so, uh, that's very important for 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 relationships, no? For the way we are, and and also as Javier mentioned about power, no? I think that's a very important uh, thing in the film. Uh, we wanted we wanted to explore on that, no? On on how when we have some power over somebody else, uh, maybe I mean maybe we are not using it uh, because uh, we feel it's not ethic. But what if you really need it? No? What, what if you really need it as the main character in the film and you have that power, no? So mm -hmm. I think it's it's good to to examine that kind of behaviors because uh, we all can can get close to that if we have the reasons if we feel if we think that we have the reason the right reason and also the power to do it. No, so this is why I, I felt it's an, it's interesting to, to to have this reflection on on how this abuse works and and how the power no, works on on a workplace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I mean, Javier, I know you you know your character is he presents himself as as very much a good boss who really cares mm -hmm. for his employees but especially when we have this situation where there's a a, a competition and he's so desperate mm -hmm. to be named the best workplace and, and mm -hmm. yeah that he goes completely over the top um absolutely 
Yeah. So, it, sorry, go go, Steve. No, I mean, I, I, and and I know you've said you drew upon you know all kinds of different people, including people mm -hmm. like Harvey Weinstein for for this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the moment comes when he was born into it. He really was a person who, from the cradle, he was very much taken care of by his parents. And then he uh, got all this uh, industry on his hands, and he only has to maintain it, which is not an easy task, but also doesn't mean that he really works as hard as he is supposed to make everybody believe. And then here comes the award, the recognition to the to the excellence as a businessman and he wants that at work no matter what and then the story which happens in seven days seven or eight days fernando correct me if i'm wrong seven oh, days. labor week actually <laughs> yeah exactly uh takes place from the moment he knows that the commission is going to come and pay a visit to the fabric for that excellence award until the very end where we see if he gets it or not and the whole desperation for him to make everybody and everything to be a stable balance that's why the scales fabric industry is not is not a is not a casual it has a meaning to create a balance and equilibrium so everything looks great from the outside so he can really access to that recognition but behind the scenes uh, we see the truth of it we see the manipulation we see the abuse we see uh the lying the lying the the yeah the tricks the things that are making people fall into the hole right. and not being able to get up again and but that doesn't matter what it matters is that everything shines and everything looks good for the others and and, and it's i think it is also reading about our society today in the sense that we are all so obsessed by the way we try to look to each other through the media, through the through the social networks things, is like, but what's behind that? What what is the what is the truth behind? And and playing that character is so, as I said, so rich, so complex, and also so fun because it's very wide. It's a very wide, complex character to play that gives you room to go to different places in one in one in one single scene and. Uh, and yes, I, I I saw some examples of people in Spain, but again, this reads everywhere. Like this is a, it could be a, a profile of Harvey Weinstein in some places where he was this kind of person that we also want to portray, which is he's so warm and so smart and attractive. Not, I don't mean physically, I mean like the world he's seen the things he say, he looks very much in control of what he does and what he says. There's some knowledge about certain things and he knows how to drop that, that those notes and those knowledges in order to make people be like, wow, surprised by it. He's fun, he's close. And then when, when you realize you have given him the room, the floor for that person to jump on you and take everything out of you. And that's what happened with Harvey Weinstein and many others. So yes, it's it's also kind of uh, uh, a tale about that kind of profile. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the film very much has has humor, but it's also you know it's it's a very black humor. I mean, well, Fernando, yeah. how how tricky was it to find the right tone for this? Because you're you're using humor, but you're dealing with pretty serious subjects. Yeah, you're, you're right. I, I mean, in, in the beginning, and as it usually happens when I was writing, it seemed very easy to me, you know, because somehow that tone was coming with the character itself, as I mentioned in the beginning, but also with the situations, with almost with every single line in the script, even if sometimes they were painful. No? So the humor was there. I couldn't uh, avoid it. Actually, it was the other way around. No? Sometimes I try to, to keep it under control. I mean, humor in some other films I've done before, it's always there. But for this particular film, I, I made the decision of, of not uh, of leaving the humor uh, run freely. And that way, uh, there is also a kind of a balance, if I may say, because uh, the darkest the drama becomes, the, the, the strongest the humor comes also. No? So you keep that balance. No? The humor needs to be stronger and, and, and take, take it farther away. So you can take also the drama farther away. No? 
and uh, yeah. and then and, and also um, the other part of it to me is that humor sometimes you, i think that you are laughing in the film but you are saying what I'm, what I'm laughing of <laughs> this is not funny it's <laughs> terrible actually what's going on on the screen no but uh, this happens uh, all, almost from the very beginning to the end no? mm. and i think it's also because humor comes in the film humor comes from from pain no? which is something uh, which i like when i watch some films that do this similar kind of approach uh, so the humor for the film is, is not cultural it's not it doesn't come from spanish culture or, or from it comes more from pain and pain is some something that we all understand and no matter where we live no matter if we are um, americans spanish or, or russian uh, so because we all feel pain because of the same things we laugh because of different things <laughs> but uh, we we cry or we have pain for for the similar things you know, in life so and then I, this kind of humor, which comes from this pain and from this uh, drama, actually, is, is the one which I like in life also the, the, the most because it's the, it's the more necessary, you know, to keep that balance in life. No? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. I mean, uh, Javier, right now you've got two big English language movies out there, Dune and, and Being the Ricardos coming up. Yeah. But is it important for you to continue to work in, in Spanish on films like this one? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely, for me, it's like uh, mandatory. <laughs> thing is not that I don't want to. The thing is, what project you get involved with, and, uh, and and it's not that I'm more picky because it's in Spanish at all. No, no, I'm I'm picky in general <laughs> because I'm so always scared and insecure of what I'm doing. <laughs> I really need to understand that I am protected and surrounded by great quality, whether it's a script. Uh, the dialogues, the character, the director. So I feel more, less alone, you know, with the burden of, of making any any movie. And and uh, in Spain, I got access to projects, but uh, there are some other things that I I guess I'm not aware of. But most importantly, uh, and that's where Fernando Leon comes in the picture. <laughs> For me. Uh, the highest bar is Fernando as a screenwriter and director, and also the way he works with the with the actors, with the performances. We had the time to rehearse, we had a month, and everybody, every actor, every actress really enjoyed the process of of getting to there, uh, getting to the mud, and start working from nothing from the scratch uh, on the characters and really make them happen with him. And so when we go to the set we've been already seen working with each other so all those things that don't really help like fear insecurity need to shine need to impress the other that is far gone now we are working now it's you and i playing the scene and and that's a great feeling because most of the time you just go there speaking of ricardo's i met nicole on friday we were shooting on monday <laughs> Imagine that, Lucy and Desi. It's like, it's like, all right, hi, how are you? Okay, on Monday we are Lucy and Desi. It's, 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 uh, it's, of course, it's COVID times. It's COVID times, and and, and <clears throat> makes it way more difficult. But, but at least in COVID times, when we shoot the movie, this movie Madrid, it was Madrid was at the peak of the COVID. Thank God we didn't have any case. We were, I would say, one of the first uh, movies to be shot in Madrid while the COVID was happening in the at its highest peak and um but still we had the time to rehearse we had the time with all the security and all the measures to get together and and uh, and really go through the process explore yeah. yeah fernando is is that month-long rehearsal crucial for you <laughs> It is because uh, we have a lot of, of fun and we explore the, the the borders of the character, the limits of the character, and and this is something which I actually uh, really like to do uh, in every film, but mostly with Javier because uh, uh, we play a lot with Javier and the other actors, of course. And as he mentioned, it was a pleasure to have all of them actually in the real location, like the factory for the filming. So you could you could tell that they were getting used to the place, no? And also to me it was great to rehearse and, and start to think of how to film it also, no? then it was, but uh, I was saying this is a, it was a good experience because to have that time, all, those, uh, all the actors and Javier to explore the, the, the limits of the character and to take the character uh, much farther away of, of, it, of what was in the, in the paper. No? You know, I, 
it's like uh, I, I like the, the character in the paper a lot. I was saying, this is, this is great, this is good. <laughs> but then comes Javier and, and takes the, what's in the paper and makes it much better. No? And, and much, uh, he explores a lot uh, on the character and we have a lot of fun doing it. I, I feel comfortable with that. I actually don't want to miss that for my film because you can find some treasures there. Also, I think that we, I, Javier mentioned, you know, we trust a lot each other, which is great yeah. because when you feel, as he mentioned, and it's the same for me, when you feel safe somehow, then you can you can take risks, you know, because you know so, that um, somebody's also protecting you, protecting your work, mine as a director, his as an actor, and then you take risks and you explore and sometimes you go very far away and this is where you can find the, the gold uh, little pieces, no? If you try things, no? If you don't yeah. feel safe, uh, you don't go that far, no? And that's good for the film and, and because of this uh, trust that we have, I think that, that works very well on the set, no? And, we know each other a lot, we, each other. we don't have to say a lot <laughs> to understand what's yeah. going in, in the other one's mind, you know, so it's, but most of it, it's a joke, it's something very fun and, and very, it's, we are somehow partners no, in, in crime for this. Yeah, right. Now, uh, Javier, I, I have to ask, was it, um, was it uncomfortable at home when this movie was chosen as the Spanish Oscar entry for <laughs> your wife's movie, Parallel Mother? <laughs> Well, it was a very strange situation, that's for sure, because also we know Pedro, we love Pedro, Pedro loved the movie, we love Pedro movie, we love the other movie, Mediterraneo. Yeah. I have good friends in that movie as well. But yes, it was my wife. Let's put it this way, we didn't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we, we pretend that nothing was going on until the day they were it was announced. And we were like, I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> but of course she was she was half sad of course it makes sense but also half happy for us and she loves fernando she loved the movie and it would have been exactly the same for me i would have been sad for my movie but very happy for her and for pedro and i think i think it's a great i think it's a great uh i think it's i mean this comparison between one movie or the other is so hard and we are yeah. already in the in the race of making people compete against each other and it's so tough it's so it's so unfair because what pedro's on what, what pedro Almodovar's great movie parallel mothers have to do with the good boss or mediterranean they are three different there are three different uh projects three different uh uh proposals for the audience mm -hmm. and we've been lucky that we were chosen we were chosen and we are very honored i'm very proud and very uh committed to to put the flag in the name of the Spanish cinema, which is a, a, a film industry that I think has announced lots of an amazing artists and crew members with amazing quality of, uh, of technique and, and, art, and artistry. Uh, I've shot many movies in Spain with great people like Woody Allen, Milos Forman, Rayleigh Scott, um, and many others, and, and Iñárritu, and they all uh, go out of Spain saying, wow, I mean, the, the quality of the people, the human quality, which is most important than anything, but also the, the technical quality, the performance quality, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And be, be represented, re, 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 representing that in this Oscar race is very, it's an honor for us. Right. I, I also feel like, you know, your movie of all movies, you have to go into the Oscar race knowing that um, caring too much about awards can only lead to bad things. Absolutely, that's what happened to the to the to the character in the movie, the good boss. <laughs> <laughs> to the good boss, and how he really wants to achieve that thing so he can have. He already has the place in the wall chosen for that plaque, so. It's a reminder of the ambition, of the greed, of something that really doesn't make any sense. Because why would he ever be the person chosen to be the most excellent of them all? It's impossible to choose that. But he really believes it's true. He really believes he deserves it. And that's the problem. The problem is that if you have fun with all of this, it's great, this competition, but you're competing with people that you are truly, truly right. admire and respect. So it's it's fun to meet them on the occasions on the award ceremonies because every time you go there it's like oh my god how are you i love so much what you do and it's true because like, wow what a great chance of knowing you yeah, yeah, yeah. because i've seen your work i've seen your movies and it's true that's not 
small talk. He's like, shit, how, how blessed I am of being near you because I love your fucking word, man. It's very inspiring. Mm -hmm. That's saying when you're thinking of yourself, no, I deserve it above any other, then <laughs> there's a problem. And I think, I guess the good boss feels a little bit that way. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, Fernando, was that idea? That, did the idea of the award come in early for you as you were as you were writing this? Yes, very early because I actually loved the idea of of uh, he fighting for such a, a actually a, a small and uh, and selfish thing, no? Like getting this award, even if it, that award can get some other rewards, no? Like some money, some subsidies, some. But I, I like this idea, no? Because by the end, it's, it's this big paradox, no? It's it's, a, it's, a, it's an award for fairness, for transparency, for excellence, and and the movie's showing you how many things he will do to get it, which are not transparent at all, nor not nor excellent, nor nor fair, no, no, not, not, not clean. Fair. So, yeah, he's doing all, every single thing which is the opposite to what <laughs> that award recognizes, no? And that's fun. Actually, I remember in the very beginning, somebody told me. Shouldn't it be something much more important, like some kind, you know, some Chinese company is about to buy the scales factory? And I said, no, no, not at all. I've seen that 100 times in some other films. I prefer write the opposite, you know, to explore this this character, this uh, this boss of this uh, old-fashioned factory, and tr taking care of every, every little thing in the factory and 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 uh, wanting so much, you no, know, uh, mm. this small war for his uh, vanity, you no. Know? Right. So let let me just ask the both of you. I mean, were there was there a particular thing about this movie that you found personally the most challenging? I think for me as an actor was uh, the challenge of it all is to really sustain, maintain, hold the weight of it, mm -hmm. uh, and and to be able to go from one tone from one dark tone to the most comic tone of it in the same scene. But it's, again, it's so beautifully written that it really gives you the clues how to get there. But as an actor, you have to go and do it emotionally and physically. So that was a challenge. And also, I'm in every frame of the movie almost. So that's also something that is challenging for any actor or actress, like to be in every frame because you have to hold your energies and to hold your concentration and to be able to breathe and rest and then boom, give it all in one take or two takes or three takes four takes but hold the reins because when it is week five when it's week five otherwise you are exhausted and i guess and with this i will finish and i'll let fernando speak for me it was very challenging to go to the ending of that movie i think the ending of this movie really drops a bomb into the audiences we've seen that happening on, on big uh movie theaters full of people which is a miracle to see in spain and out of spain that really they enjoy the movie they laugh the movie and all of a sudden at the end <clears throat> there's a silence and there's like <gasps> and and you understand that that is the message <laughs> yeah. right there and but you have to get there as an actor as a character you have to get there so when it happens, it's not something that comes out of the blue, but you go, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the, to join uh, Javier's, uh, yeah, I, I think most of it was about uh, the humor again. You know, when you have these so extremely dark situations uh, close to uh, these other um, very fun situations, sometimes uh, you are afraid, of course, no? As when you are uh, dealing with the, even in the editing room, no, it's like, uh, because you want the audience to follow you, no? and and not to laugh when they they, they aren't supposed to do, and the other way around. No, so you need to deal with that. And it's again about the the tone of the film. No, you asked me in the beginning uh, if it was easy, and I mentioned when I was writing it was very easy. But then you have to do it <laughs> because you have to share <laughs> that, and everybody needs to be in the same, of course, in, of course, in the in the same boat. No, and so this was for the actors, for every one of them, and uh, and also then with the music, with the with the editing, no? all of it uh, needed to have this this kind of special particular tone, which is not the most normal one. No? So, so humor was one of the challenges, and also because I think that all of us, every actor, Javier and myself, we wanted the film to be first real no? and to be true, and then the darkness and the humor had to be there, but it shouldn't be that mm. shouldn't be an imposition to the film, no? 
I mean, it, it, it just had to come in a, in a natural way. No? And also, if I may say that there was some other thing which was challenging, I think especially for Javier or for both of us, which is that, as he mentioned, uh, all the plot takes place in a week uh, where he's waiting for this co committee, you know, uh, uh, which is going uh, to, to bring the award, maybe. And so, I, I, sorry, I start again. <laughs> No, all the action takes place in in just a week, and so in just in five days, and and the character of uh, Javier's character uh, goes through a lot uh, for that week, no, and it has like a strong uh, evolution no? from the first from the Monday to the to the Friday. It's a very different character, no, and 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 he needed to to do that and to do it in a very precise way because, of course, as it always happens, we weren't shooting a chrono in a yeah. chronological order, so we were. So I think that we both very we were aware of this and and we were exchanging every morning you know when we were meeting in the in the factory before filming which uh, we were exchanging about this you know, about uh, what was exactly the character this day because the the transition was very very critical you no know, was very very subtle mm -hmm. and and so of course Javier was taking good care of that and, and trying to to see what was going on with the character every day because it had to be different you know? it was five days it was mm -hmm. uh, Otherwise, the character would have become like something plain, or just angry, or just fun, or and it was much more difficult than that, no. And so this is this is I think that was one of the challenges of the film, and, and we took we paid a lot of attention to this particular thing. Yeah. Well, so how different how different is Javier as an actor from from the actor who walked on your set, in you know, for for Mondays in the in the sun and in the in sun nineteen the years sun. ago. <laughs> yeah. This is the best part of it. I mean, it's like uh, not a lot has changed. I mean, uh, things that you may think uh, that change with time, no? Which is you have more experience, so you get more relaxed or more. He keeps the the a very strong tension when working and the passion for for the work. I mean, he's uh, challenging uh, challenging himself. So so <laughs> everybody else in a in a in a good way, of course. I mean, not like trying like. Uh, and that's great, no? Because uh, 20 years later, uh, it's uh, I, I I I met with the same guy, uh, mm -hmm. doing the same passion to the rehearsals, to the to the filming, and and something which is great. I mean, this this passion, of course, is contagious, no? So uh, everybody else in the set, uh, when they feel that uh, Javier and of course myself, but I, I'm the director, so I'm supposed to, and I work exactly <laughs> in the same way, not trying to get the best out of every single shot. So when people realizes that this is like that, everybody's there, no? everybody's is pushing and trying to 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 get the best yeah. out of the characters and out of the of the light, out of the sound, out of everything. No, so it's this is this is still there, no? and many other things that I could mention. <laughs> but but it's true that, uh, and I guess that's why we keep on not only working together but being good friends. It's like the basics haven't changed that much, and the passion is it remains the same if not more but also we are a pain in the ass to each other like we want to repeat we want we want yeah. that that excellence that we want that perfection that the good boss wants for himself it, ah one more take one more this it's like but the fun of it is like we are we are among friends it's like yeah let's do it let's do it of course there's the pressure of time and money blah 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 but fernando is amazing in protecting the artistry in a movie set Mm -hmm. uh, the world could be collapsing and you won't notice in Fernando's eyes. Quite. He will just say, give me one more take. And the world will be on fire behind his back. It's amazing. Like, if I have the half of that, I will die of a heart attack. He's like, super cool, super quick. And then after that, when we wrap, he will tell me what was going on behind the curtain. I was like, oh my God, how do you do it? It's amazing. No? And it's because he's so laser focused on doing the job and doing properly and giving the people the time they need. It's, it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So how, how tricky was it shooting during COVID? I mean, how much did that did it affect the production? For, 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 me, was, for, me, was, sorry, for me, it was hard because I was scared. I am still very scared. I mean, the world has changed in a year because that was a year ago. Uh, uh, a year ago, we knew way less than we know today. There was no vaccine, blah, blah, blah. And it was the first time I would step out of my house 
And the good boss is a very physical role. Right. It's very important for him to invade the natural physical space of the other. So he has to touch, he has to kiss, he has to hug, he has to approach. He ha and he was like, how in the hell am I going to do this now? That's why the rehearsals were important. And little by little, we were doing tests every two days. A little by little, I start to get that confidence to give myself room to really be physical. But it took me a, it took me a, a lot of you know, effort and trust to give that leap of faith on you have to do it because if you don't, if you don't do that, it's not the character. The character has that power mm -hmm. presence that is really like boom. And then you, when you realize you are like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's Sorry, exactly, exactly like no, no, no. It's exactly like you mentioned. I was saying that it was part of the stress that you mentioned, not not the biggest part because I think we deal very well uh, with it. I mean, the production was dealing with that, and but the most important thing was what Javier just mentioned. I mean, this we didn't want that to be on the screen. No, I I, did, I really wanted. To, everything what happens in the screen should be real, and and the COVID wasn't there. It was it's not in the it's not part of the of the history, you know, so that was important to, you know, for, especially for them to get that confidence and to feel uh, at ease in, in the frame, you know, when we were filming and and for the rest of it was uh, what you all can imagine, you know, was to take care of everything, having tests every week. It's true that we were filming in a very bad moment, so we were going, when we were going to the set, we were going through police controls and, mm. and they were closing neighborhoods where we were filming, so, but we could make it because we were allowed to do it with, with permissions and everything. But yeah, that was challenging. At some moment, I was worried yeah. about uh, having the film finish. I mean, the shoot uh, finish. No, but it did it, it did very well. We were careful, and, mm. and we take good care of us. Yeah. 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 So, are you guys thinking about working together again? Or oh yes. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. He doesn't know it. He doesn't know it yet. But he's going to work with me again. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of I would love course. to. <laughs> and I know, <laughs> I know. It. Right. Okay. Well, Javier, I, I know you're you're on a set, and we'll be called back yeah. from like any minute. So I will um, wrap up here. But thank you. Thank you both for the, for the audience. Thank you for joining us. It was great to have you today. And and you if you take advantage of our trial to wrap pro, you can know about upcoming screenings, register for screenings, catch up on past screenings, and you can also visit thewrap.com and click on the screenings tab. Uh, so. Thank you both for a, Thank uh, you. For a terrific movie and, and a fun conversation. Thank, Thank you, you for having us. It was a pleasure. <laughs> yeah. okay. It was always a pleasure. Thank you.